you employed? At the Bureau of Immigration. And what is your designation? I am an Immigration Officer 1 assigned at the NAIA Terminals. As Immigration Officer 1 assigned at the NAIA Terminal, what are your primary functions? I work as a frontline immigration officer at NAIA. I screen arriving and departing passengers. And pwede mo bang sabihin ngayon sa aming komite, bakit ka ba nandito ngayong hapon? I am here to testify and expose the Pastillas scheme. As a frontline immigration officer, I have personally witnessed various illegal transactions over the years involving the extortion of money in exchange for unimpeded passage through the Philippines, whether leaving or entering our country. To cope with the, substa with the substantial deduction of their salaries, some immigration officers decided to offer VIP serv services for immigrants who are casino high rollers. This VIP service in involved immigration officers accepting 2,000 pesos for each high roller in exchange for the latter's convenient and seamless immigration. Sensing the immigration officer's lucrative operation, the Travel Control Enforcement Unit chiefs, namely Bien Guevara, Glenn Comia, and Ben Binsol, who were then under former Ports Operation Division Chief Red Marinas, decided to take over the operation. They took control of the collections from entering and departing passengers, then disbursed commissions at the end of every week. The TCEU chiefs were relieved from their posts sometime in the middle of the year 2019. As for POD Chief Red Marinas, he was assigned as Associate Commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration. However, he later resigned to run as mayor of Muntinlupa. On the year 2017, I started to notice the dramatic increase of Chinese nationals entering the Philippines. In a day, approximately 2,000 Chinese nationals entered the airport terminal. Immigration officers received through a group chat in the Viber application a list of names of Chinese nationals who were to be allowed entry into the Philippines without going through the usual immigration process. These Chinese nationals were no longer required to undergo screening. They were sim simply let inside the Philippines without question or investigation. However, the first Viber group chat was deleted when the Bureau of Immigration Airport Operations came under scrutiny from the National Bureau of Investigation. To avoid detection, the names of the Chinese nationals who were to be allowed VIP treatment were no longer sent through Viber. To circumvent this, the flow of the operations changed. The immigration officers at the counter were asked to bring each Chinese national to the holding area of the TCEU. A member of the TCEU would then check if the name of the Chinese national was in a master list. If the Chinese national's name was on the list, then he or she would be allowed entry into the Philippines without further screening or profiling. Naturally, this new operation caused the immigration officers great inconvenience since they had to stand up leave their seats, then lead each and every arriving Chinese national to the TCEU holding area every day. Because of this, a new Viber group chat was created which revived the original flow of the operations. News of the operation spread fast. This time, other syndicated groups within the Bureau of Immigration started submitting their own list of names of Chinese nationals. These groups worked with tribal agencies in China, the latter being the origin of the names of the entering foreign nationals. 
The syndicated groups would often compete with each other to gain favor from the Chinese travel agencies. These syndicated groups were headed by different personalities within the Bureau of Immigration. Some of these personalities are Totoy Magbuhos, Dion Albao, alias Nancy, Paul Borja, alias Lisa, Anthony Lopez, alias AL, and Dennis Robles, alias DR. They occupy various plantilla positions within the Bureau. They still maintain their syndicate group's operations. I noticed that Chinese nationals who fit the profile of an employee for a Pogo company enter our country with a tourist visa applied for with the Philippine consulates. The influence of these Chinese organizations and personalities became more apparent when they started providing immigration officers lunch meals wrapped in Chinese newspapers. However, this recently stopped due to the travel ban on incoming Chinese nationals due to the novel coronavirus. Each cooperating immigration officer would receive around 20,000 pesos weekly for Terminal 1 and 8,000 weekly for Terminal 3 duties. When I saw on television the live broadcast of the Senate hearing chaired by Senator Risa Ontiveros regarding the rights of Pogo-related prostitution and her discussion of the possible involvement of the Bureau of Immigration, I was compelled to come forward and share what I know based on my personal knowledge as a frontline immigration officer. <laughs>